So hello um, and welcome to the Robinson College uh, question and answer session um, with our group of lovely current undergraduates. Um, so I'm going to ask them all to introduce themselves um, and then we'll run through a few frequently asked questions about student life at Robinson. Hi, uh, I'm Daisy. I'm, I've just finished my first year at Robinson and I do English and I live uh, somewhere in rural Essex, which is where I am right now. Hi, um, I'm Chloe. I am going into my third year, so about to go on my year um, abroad. I do French, Spanish and Portuguese and I live about an hour from Cambridge near to Ipswich. <laughs> Hi, I'm Becky. Um, I'm about to graduate from philosophy and I'm from Nuneaton, which is near Coventry, Birmingham area in the Midlands. Hi, I'm Ifa. I just finished my second year and I'm from Leicester. Oh, I do medicine. Uh, hi, I'm Kieran. I just finished my third year. Uh, I do natural sciences and I'm from Bertha and Trent. Great. So um, the first question to you guys is when you rocked up at Robinson for Freshers' Week and um, kind of in your first term, what was your first impression of the college? And what kind of stood out about it? Sure. Any of you? Yeah, Becky, if you want to go mm -hmm. and have an oh, I loved it. I rocked up and I was so scared. <laughs> I thought that I wasn't going to make any friends. I'd been piping up on the offer holder group chat before we came and embarrassed myself thoroughly but I had nothing to be worried about um I um went to the garden restaurant which is like the canteen that we have in Robinson like straight away and just sat down with a group and it was just easy easy going from there it was good I think I can say that during Freshers Week I was very surprised I remember turning up and I thought that it would be quite like our oh, year and then all the other years and I think I was really shocked because that because the older years run your freshest week in college um, and that was like a really good way because I mainly made friends in older older years and like everyone mixed straight away so I think I found well, that was my first impression when I'm probably like surprised of like how much like, contact I have with the older years I think. Um, I had never actually seen the college before apart from interviews so it was nice to see it again but I think uh, something that really stood out for me was how friendly everyone was. Immediately, like when we got into college, we had some games with our year group and everyone really connected and started forming relationships already. So yeah, it was really fun. Yeah, when I joined, I thought kind of like what Becky was saying before, it was just so nice that um, everything was kind of really close together and um, all of the people you're going to meet kind of live in the same place so during freshers week I felt like through going to the canteen and stuff it was just so easy to meet everyone because everyone was in one space which was really nice. Yeah I just echo everything that you all just said I guess. <laughs> Great um, and so kind of moving on from your freshers week and talking more about your um, student experience um, what does a typical day look like um, in your subject? What's medicine like? Um, <laughs> early mornings. <laughs> Most of my mornings would probably be, um, like, I don't normally have breakfast only once in a while, but I'll be pre-reading for lectures, having two, three lectures in a day, maybe a practical as well. And then probably that will be until like three ish or one if it's like an easy day. And then we'll have a supervision um, in the evening, so around like five ish. And then I'll probably end the day by just watching some Netflix or like going to find some friends. Yeah. What about any of you art students? Because it might be slightly different. <laughs> I'm a philosopher and we are uh, chilled out. I've had a really good time. Um, 
I know we, we have lectures um, not every day like it might be like every other day um, and one supervision a week like a lot of it is like independent work um, they give you like a reading list at the start of the week to prepare for an essay and then I go and chat to an academic for an hour um, we have discussion groups like slotted in different parts of the week um, and a lot of like sitting out on the grass, like watching people play frisbee and just like having a nice time. Yeah, I feel like because I do English, it's kind of the same. Um, I think Robinson is so good for humanities students just because it's right next to the site where a lot of humanities lectures are, which is kind of one of the reasons I chose it. So I think I calculated it takes me like three minutes to get from my bedroom to the lecture hall in the morning which is really nice and generally I tend to go to the library for the mornings just because I like to get up and then I'll come back and have lunch in Robinson and then do some like studying or whatever with some other friends just like with other subjects as well. Um, so it's on. Um, I would say that for languages, yeah, it's fairly similar to English. I think um, normally get up um, kind of late, like nine, then do a couple of hours in the library. And then I always have lunch with someone to go and chat, meet someone, a couple of hours. And then in the afternoon, probably each day I end up doing like between four and six hours work per day. Obviously that's different in exam time, there's probably a couple more. Um, but my teaching is sort of a mix of classes or supos, it depends, because like li um, language is obviously half language, half literature. Um, so it's sort of one on three normally for literature, and then language is like one on twelve. So it's quite a relaxed lifestyle, but at evenings I always go and do something and see someone, so yeah. Um, I guess for me, for natural sciences, it's more similar to medicine. Um, not too sure about the pre-lecture reading I can't say myself I've uh, really got involved with that kind of thing but, um, yeah just a couple of lectures in the morning normally and then some sort of lab and some sort of uh, meeting with, a, uh, with an academic in the department to talk about some work um, and then you kind of get back to college around six maybe uh, just eat dinner and then see your friends I guess or do some work if you have some work to do but, yeah great well I mean you've all talked a lot about your academic lives there um, and now, if we move on to your free time, um, are you guys involved in any clubs and societies or do you do anything else um, when you're not studying or in lectures or supervisions and things like that? I've done, um, I was a member of the Robinson College Feminist Society for all of my years here. That's a great society that we have. Um, and I was women's officer within the colleges we have what's called like a JCR it's like a student committee where you can like apply for different positions um, and try to like enact change in the college and represent your peers um, so as the women's officer like I was negotiating like free sanitary products um, and I also did photography for like student magazines and plays and like um, yeah, I did loads of stuff that I never thought that I'd end up doing before I arrived at uni. You just kind of like fumble your way through and find new things that, that work for you. It's good. Anyone else? <laughs> I guess I play, um, I play a bit more sport, I guess. So yeah, I guess you I could just talk about like the, so you have like kind of university sports. Uh, for a few, I don't know, you're either really into it or actually quite good at it. Um, and then you have where you kind of train probably three or four times a week and then have games on the weekend or something like that. So it's much more like just playing for a normal sports team. Um, and then college sports, which is, of course, what I got involved with, uh, which are just kind of like you turn up and you don't even have to have heard of the sport before the day to be able to play it. And it's a lot more casual and fun and it's a good way to meet people. So, um yeah, I kind of got involved with that and then a lot of the, so I was the access officer on the college committee as well as Becky, which uh, the, the same kind of thing as Becky, which is something I really enjoyed doing. Um, it meant that you got to talk to people in college about, uh, like members of staff in college about issues that you cared about, I guess, and got to try and change their mind or, you know, 
get things done that you wanted to get done, I guess. So, yeah. <laughs> I also enjoyed college sports. Um, I tried rowing for a while. Um, tried it for a bit. I'm not sure if I'm really a rower, so I stopped that. But um, it was fun for a while. And then I think I did. Um, I've been enjoying quite a lot of, like the volunteering side of things too. So I was um, part of the Cambridge Refugee Scholarship Campaign, which basically this year, for the first year, the um, university took in ten scholars um, from like refugee backgrounds. I was part of the team welcoming them, so that was quite a good mix. I think I kind of had the college side, the college sport, and then also being on the um, JCR for a bit, and then also like there was like wider things going on too. So the scholarship campaign was like. I don't know, it felt like a very real experience of actually like being part of a campaign, a charity, and um, it's definitely been very helpful for sure. So, yeah. Yeah, so um, in college, I was um, part of the Christian Union with Flair. We were both the uh, college reps. And outside of college, I was part of the committee for the African Caribbean Society. So we did lots of events social events, access events throughout the year. So it was a real good mix of both in college and out of college things. Yeah, um, I remember back in like October, one of the first things I did um, in the university was go to uh, one of the like climate activism groups that they have. And that was probably like the best thing for me because it meant I met so many people from other colleges and like all these networks of other groups that do different campaigning and stuff which I feel like has been what I've done with most of my time but also um, I've done some stuff like out of my comfort zone like uh, writing for different student newspapers and stuff which I find really good because you can work that around your own schedule it's not like one thing you have to go to it's just if you have an idea you can get in contact with them so I found that to be good. <laughs> like you guys have definitely shown the diversity of extracurricular things at Cambridge. Um, I think we covered um, nearly every different area there. Um, so um, as a question, um, the next question um, moves kind of to the application process. Um, obviously you guys have all um, been through the application process in your subjects. Um, and was wondering if you had any tips or advice um, you would give to someone who's just about to start their Cambridge application. Thank you. Um, I was going to say, I think it's like um, super cliche, but I thought I had to know so much stuff. Like I went to interview and I was like practicing my languages loads, thinking I was going to have this whole like section French and Spanish and um, was doing loads of reading, basically trying to like understand the whole of like Francophone Hispanic culture um, as best as I could as a year 13. And I think looking back, like the amount of knowledge that I needed, of course, like they were looking that I was interested and that I was super, super keen and would actually take the course seriously and be like really involved, I guess. But it wasn't like this sort of knowledge test that I was like, expecting. Um, I think that's how I found it. it was, I think, a lot more about what I did with what I knew in the interview rather than like what I what I knew, I guess. Um, I guess I think for me, um, a couple of things. I think it's really important to kind of just make sure you thought through if Cambridge is actually the place that you want to go to. So like if, if you enjoy what like the course guide sounds like you're going to be learning about, if you like the way that they teach things there. So like small group teaching, um, where you might be talking with one other student to an academic like that appeals to you is probably a good place to apply but if it, it doesn't um then another option might be a, a, something that suits you more uh if you like the city or something like that um and then i guess specifically like which college you look at if you get the chance to come to cambridge and have a look at the colleges or if you can just see them online just i guess kind of look at that kind of thing but you don't really need to i guess the main thing i'd say is it kind of gets built up as this massive kind of um, difficult thing and it's like this kind of entire process but at the end of the day um so let's say with your interview they just want to have a conversation with you and see if you suit the way they teach people here they're not trying to trick you out or make you feel stupid or anything like that they're just trying to see kind of how you respond to what they tell you so i guess try and relax but i mean it's impossible but <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, for sure. Just, okay, just don't ask. Just go. No, you go. Okay. <laughs> just be confident. The thing, as Kieran said, the thing with Cambridge is that, like, before you get to Cambridge, it will be made into this huge thing, and a lot of you will be applying from state schools where probably, like, no one else has been to Oxbridge before you or even applied to Oxbridge. I know that I was the first person to, to come from my school and you might just think that it's impossible or that you're you know you're going to be fighting against people that have been in like i remember hearing about these oxbridge prep courses that people are on like you've got this just go in believe in your ability and your passion for your subject and that will you know that is what will get you in not um the school on your piece of paper like you've got this I think um, just kind of what Flo was saying before, but when you're writing like your personal statement and everything, it doesn't matter what you know or what you have read. Like I remember getting so stressed about, I have to have read like all of Shakespeare and all of Charles Dickens and the things that would make me sound smart, but they really don't care. It's about just showing what you're interested in. Like the thing that they're looking for is just someone who wants to learn and is interested in the subject so if you want to write about something that you love then that matters way more than what you think is like smart or the right thing to do if that makes sense yeah i would um, agree with kieran especially with medicine most medical schools have different course layout and different way they assess so it would be to like very much look into the course and see whether you actually like it Cambridge is very science heavy and um, it doesn't suit everyone. So I'd say that's one of my tips. And the second one is adding to what Flo and Daisy said, it's um, write about something you're interested in and especially with your personal statement and when you're pre preparing for interviews. For me, I've heard loads of stories of people saying I had to read this book and this book, but I didn't read books at that time. I didn't really like reading too much. So I watched a movie and then I researched on something from that movie. And I think it really showed in my interview when I was asked about it, because I had more enthusiasm about it because it's something I wasn't forced to read, but something I did of my own accord. That's great. Thanks guys. Um, so the final question now, um, hopefully this is an easy one for you guys. Um, what is your favorite thing about Robinson or Cambridge generally? Hopefully you've got something in your head. <laughs> Robinson Bar, absolutely. <laughs> why, why Robinson Bar? I would say the bar and the cafe, because basically like the, the cafe is attached to the bar and then it's just like a really social area and it's like big groups, small groups, people like work in there, people chill in there and it's just like a place where everyone comes together. And I haven't really seen that in every college, so I really like the fact that we have this space which actually people do use and like two feather milkshakes are really good. So. <laughs> Um, I think for me, my favourite thing about college is definitely the gardens, just because they're unbelievable, I have to be honest, especially compared to the slightly interesting red bricks and bricks, <clears throat> and then you kind of walk through it and see the garden, it's like, wow, who knew that this could be here, um, especially in summer, I mean, obviously once you finish exams, you can just lie in the gardens all day, it's pretty, pretty fun times. Um, in terms of Cambridge, uh, overall, um, I quite like how there's quite a few different parts kind of spaced around everywhere because it means you can kind of, if you want to just go to the park with some friends or something, you can, I guess, go to different places and, you know, get bored of, I don't know, sitting on the same piece of grass. So. <laughs> I like how close um, the college is and how close everyone is because even if you don't have the same timetable as other people, at least you bump into them while you're walking to the library or something so yeah I really love the like the position of Robinson in the town because I think there's a lot of hype about being right in the center of town and right next to everything but it's literally it takes five minutes on your bike to get from Robinson across the river and I find that cycle across there's like one bridge that everyone goes over it's such a calming part of my day just always going on that same cycle, that same walk back. I feel like it really separates Robinson as like my home from 
the busy town and yeah I find that like such a nice part of it. I loved all the different pockets in Cambridge for people that wanted to do all kinds of different things um like you can go and sign up for a million different things and find people that you you like and gel with um and also the gardens like Kieran. Kieran and I have spent many a many a an hour out on the grass like face down <laughs> <laughs> yeah robinson is just super lovely and all the years as, as daisy said earlier are our friends um well thank you guys um i hope um this video has been informative and given um you some more information about what it's like to come and study at cambridge and in particular robinson and um, please do check out all the links um on our website um, and if you do have any questions, um, there are email addresses um, that you can contact um, on the website as well.